Hey guys, so today we are talking iX12 radio. You may notice that my radio is now a beautiful white, whereas before it was the standard black. I was having some issues with my radio, mostly my fault. I had broken some switches and some other stuff. I sent it to Horizon Hobby for service and they did an amazing job and hooked me up with a new front shell. So I've got a fresh white color. So big thanks to Horizon for taking such good care of my radio. Uh, when I got it back though, however, it was pretty much wiped. I had um, lost all of my models due to some of the components that they ended up replacing. So I need to make a new model for my Betaflight drones. And I thought, that's, that's content. So we're gonna walk through making a model to work on a Betaflight FPV quad on the Spectrum iX12. So let's get into the radio to create a new model. Just push up here, push and hold to confirm, turning off the RF. The only model we have is this Acro model. I don't think anything has actually been set up. It's just something that came with it. Push up here and we can add a new model. Let's see, default. Now there's uh, four different types of aircraft that you can pick from. I do choose multi-rotor. The reason I choose multi-rotor is two reasons. One, it by default has the correct frame rate, which you'll see in a minute. And also on multi-rotor models, the trim switches are disabled. So you can't accidentally bump your trims and get them off center. And when you are using an aircraft that has a flight controller, you should never set the trim on the radio itself because the gyro and accelerometer should take care of that. And if your sticks aren't centered, there's another problem and you either need to fix your radio or compensate for it in the flight controller software or whatever. So we have our new model created. Let me click on this and let's change the name. I'm going to name it Betaflight SRXL2. I name it that because I'm going to be using the new Spectrum SPM4650 receiver. This is the new receiver that's made specifically for FPV mini quads and it uses Spectrum's new SRXL2 protocol to talk to the flight controller. I already have one in a quad here. The other nice thing is it can make binding really easy because there's actually a bind button. Anyways, confirm here. Um, I think we're only gonna use like eight channels. I could change the picture if I wanted, but we'll do that later. Now let's get out of here. Get me into my actual model. Now, uh, there's a couple things that you wanna do before you actually bind it. First thing I wanna do is confirm that the frame rate is set correctly. Where is that? It's not in model adjust, is it in system settings? Nope, the last one, model setup, frame rate right up top here. There are two options. There are uh, 22 milliseconds or 11 milliseconds. As you can see, the default was 11 milliseconds and that's what you wanna use for uh, a mini quad. It's gonna give you the lowest latency. The, uh, the higher number, the 22 milliseconds, has more latency but it's more compatible with other spectrum receivers that maybe even use older protocols like DSM two or something like that. So if you're flying a fixed wing or you don't have digital servos or whatever, you might need to use 22 milliseconds, but there are no servos and you want the lowest latency possible. So for mini quads, always use 11 milliseconds. Again, when you use a multi-rotor model, that should be the default, but if for some reason you use an airplane model or something like that, you'll, you'll have to change it. Okay. The other thing that we're gonna do right off the bat is, um, and you could do this after binding, but I just, while I see it, I don't wanna forget, is I wanna turn off this whole flight mode thing. The one annoying thing about the multi-rotor model on the iX12, and really all Spectrum radios, is by default they have a flight mode set up in the radio itself, and you don't want that because the, what a flight mode on the radio means is when you change flight modes, it actually changes all of your switch assignments and even your channel assignments. So what that's really for is on maybe larger, you know, aerial photography type drones, you might have one flight mode for actually navigating. And then once you get in position, switch to another flight mode where one of your sticks actually becomes like the camera movement or something like that while it just loiters. So it's kind of cool if you're building your own custom giant rig, but that's not what most people are using it for. So I wish that it didn't come like that by default. I think most most uh, 
um, uh, pilots are going to be doing something like this. I mean, I don't know. Maybe maybe there's more big drone pilots than I realize that are building custom stuff like this. Anyways, the way to disable it is so right now switch one is set to uh, switch B, which means it gives you three flight modes. In fact, I mean, you could turn on like another switch up here and then now look, now you have to like nine different flight modes depending on what switch position you're in. So you can have just all sorts of crazy stuff, but we don't want any of that. <laughs> We're just gonna inhibit both of these switches. So inhibit and inhibit. And now um, there's only one flight mode available which is good because we just don't ever actually want it to change. You could avoid all that if you just used an acro or a, an airplane model and built it off that and there's no reason that you can't. You just need to remember to adjust the frame rate but then also there's the trim switch thing I mentioned. So using the multi-rotor model seat, these switches do nothing. Nothing's changing on the, the, the trim thing there. Which by the way, maybe for the multi-rotor model that this whole trim window could be swapped for something else. Spectrum if you're listening. Anyways, it's time to actually do the binding. There is a push button on the receiver, so all I need to do is hold that button down while I plug this in, do a little contortion here. All right, we have the blinky orange light in the back. That means the receiver is in bind mode. Now on the radio, we just tap bind, push and hold. All right, we are bound with DSMX at 11 milliseconds and we have telemetry, all that good stuff. So what we need to do now is actually configure the model to work with Betaflight. So I'm gonna plug my uh, flight controller into Betaflight. And the things that uh, we need to think about are the endpoints and the switch assignments. So going over to the receiver tab, Let's look at what we have going on here. Um, first off, you know, if, if this is like a new model in Betaflight, the assignments might not be correct. So select the correct channel map. It's obviously spectrum here. So when you click that, it'll make sure that throttle is actually throttle, roll is roll, pitch is pitch, yaw is yaw. Um, so the, the assignments are now correct uh, because we set the correct channel map in Betaflight, but we still need to fix uh, things like endpoints, right? So. Uh, what we want to see is when throttle goes up, the throttle bar goes to the right. Uh, that is correct. When we move roll to the right, the bar should go to the right. That is not correct. So roll needs to be reversed. We'll do that in the radio. And when we move yaw to the right, the bar should go to the right. So yaw also needs to be reversed. And when we pitch up, that bar should go to the right. So that's correct. So that's typical. What you should expect to see is that roll and yaw are going to have to be reversed. So let's go into model adjust. And the menu you're looking for is servo setup. And then you're going to the reverse submenu here. So we just activate reversal for yaw and roll. And now roll right, bar right, yaw right, bar right. We didn't mess up anything else, cool. We're not done yet in this area though because the travels are not correct. As Betaflight explains at the top here, you need your stick travels to move the bars in Betaflight from 1000 to 2000. So a full roll left deflection should give me a 1000, but it's only giving me 1159. It's not going low enough. And if I go to the right, it should give me 2000 and it's off by a similar value, only at 1840. So now, in this same servo setup menu, we need to go into the travel submenu, and we need to increase the travels so that the stick travel gives us um, greater output in Betaflight. So we'll start with the altitude, which is your throttle. Click in here, and now you can adjust each side independently, but what makes it a little bit easier to, to do is click this lock button in the center, and now, they will be synced up. Oh, I think, oop, you know what? Don't click that lock button unless they start in the same place. Otherwise, it'll be all off. Whoopsies, I just learned something new. Okay, go to zero, go to zero, now lock it. Cool, now they're locked, I didn't know that. Okay, so um, let's, I know what the value is for throttle, it's usually like 148 or 149, so let's see. 
Oh, we're at 992, that's too much. Back it off a bit, 148, back it off. 147, that should do it. Okay, now we do the same for roll. Hit that lock button before <laughs> messing anything up and we'll go to 147 and for roll, we're good. 1,000 to 2,000, cool. So one. 147 is going to pretty much be our magic number, but we'll we'll check for every single one as we do it. So pitch, lock it. 147. Boop. 2,000, 1,000, perfect. And lastly, yaw. 1,000, 2,000. So now we have our sticks set up, the channel directions and endpoints are correct. The next thing we want to do are these switches. So the first thing is to assign the switches in the radio. I think that's over in the model setup tab. Where are we? Channel assign. Cool. So now we can see all the different switches that are assigned to the different channels and you can see up here this is applying to mode one and if we had multiple flight modes like if we didn't do that thing earlier there'd be different flight modes so we could change all the different assignments um, for the channels so even the, the sticks could be manipulated but we're not doing that that's why we disabled that so um, the gear channel that's really like aux one in beta flight uh, the, the aux numbers are all going to be offset by one, so that's something to keep in mind. For the gear, which is the aux 1 channel in Betaflight, I use that for my flight mode switch, and now that's not the flight mode like we were talking about in the radio, that's the flight mode in Betaflight, which is things like angle mode or air mode or horizon mode, which you should never use horizon mode. And I use this switch up here for that. And these are just standard switch assignments that I use on all my radios, just what I'm familiar with. For aux one in the radio, which is gonna be aux two in beta flight, I use that as my arming switch. So I use this switch up here. Now that's all assigned, cool. For aux two in the radio, which again will be aux three in beta flight, we're gonna set that up for both our beeper and for um, turtle mode. So we flip that. I use that switch for that. And then lastly, aux three in the radio, which is aux four in beta flight. I use that for a video transmitter pit mode. So we'll flip that. The other channels I don't use, so you can just inhibit them. I don't think you need to, but it's just something I like to do. So that there's nothing else going on that need not be going on. So now let's verify in beta flight that all my switch assignments are correct. The drone is already configured because I was using it with my other Spectrum radio. And like I said, I use the same switches and channels, so we should be all good. So try the arm switch. We're good. The flight mode switch. Yep, we got angle mode. We've got air mode. The beeper. Yep, yep. Okay, okay. Turtle mode. Hit mode. Everything. Everything looks good. All right, guys, so that's everything that you need to do to set up a model on your iX12 for Betaflight. We used a multi-rotor model so that the trim switches would be disabled. We turned off the flight mode functionality in the radio because it's not what we need for an FPV quad. We uh, set the stick directions and endpoints to match what Betaflight needs. We assigned the channels to the correct switches that we like, and we assigned those switches to um, functions in Betaflight. That's really it. It's not that complicated. Uh, other things you can do are go through and do uh, voices in the radio so that as you flip the switches, it tells you um, what you just did. And that's really easy in the iX12 because it has uh, Google's text to voice thing built in. So you can actually just type out something and it will speak it so I could set it up so that when I flip the switch, it says armed or, or anything, whatever. Um, that takes a while, so I'll, uh, I'll just do that later. The other thing you could do is you could set up telemetry, which will let you show flight information on the screen of the radio, like battery voltage and, and things like that, that Betaflight is outputting, as well as um, let the radio beep or yell at you or vibrate or whatever if your RSSI is getting low. So if you're interested in seeing that, let me know and I could do another video on setting up telemetry in the iX12. So stay tuned and I'll see you guys again soon.